Forecasting is something that everybody has to learn if you're going to pursue storms. You're going to spot, chase, uh, just be a weather enthusiast and watch things on radar, on the internet. You got to know these things, right? So today, we're going to go back to the basics and we're going to talk about the very basics of storm forecasting. Let's go. very heart, there are three ingredients you're looking for to get storms. You're looking for moisture, instability, and lift. This seems very simple, but it's very true. To just get a thunderstorm, you need all three things. Let's dive in right now and look at all three and how they contribute to storms. Storms are pretty ineffective at storming unless they have clouds to storm after all or some something well anyways think back to your basic science classroom school water that is gaseous is called water vapor and this water in the atmosphere is what is present on any storm day measuring the water in the air is done a few different ways you've likely heard of humidity which is used more commonly however for storm spotting we think of moisture in terms of dew point temperatures as a general rule Warmer air is capable of holding much more moisture than cooler air. For storms, you're looking for dew points typically above 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And for severe storms, you need dew points that are greater than 50 degrees generally. Another ingredient you need for storm formation is atmospheric instability. Generally speaking, this means warm and moist air at the surface and cooler air a lot. There are many ways to measure instability, but the most notable way for storm chasing and storm spotting is convective available potential energy, or CAPE. CAPE is measured in joules per kilogram. For severe weather, we generally look for CAPE values of greater than 1,000 joules per kilogram on average. Typically, moisture and instability go hand in hand. If there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, there is usually at least some instability and vice versa. Still, it is possible to have a moist atmosphere but very little to no instability. This is more common in the winter when temperatures are cooler at the surface but the air is saturated and snowy. You can learn more about instability and CAPE at the link in the description. And even if you have a moist and unstable air mass, that means nothing if that air cannot be lifted upwards so water vapor can condense into storm clouds. Lift is achieved in the atmosphere in two very basic ways, near the surface and in the mid and upland levels of the atmosphere. Converging air masses such as strong cold fronts or dry lines can be the source of lift near the surface. In the upper atmosphere, storm systems often move in and evacuate air aloft, which causes lift in the higher levels of the atmosphere. Together, moisture, instability, and lift can combine to form storms. So you know the conditions now. You know the same basics you're looking for to get storms to form, right? Well, you also are probably wondering, well, how do I know? Like, where do I look at this stuff? Where do I look for this stuff? There are several tools available for you to do that. Let's take a look at a few of them right now. The first thing uh, you see these posted all the time online, right? Weather models. Where do you go for weather models? There's several different options. They're right here on the screen. I prefer Pivotal Weather as of right now, not sponsored, but I do love that. I love that site so much. Also, uh, another tool you will be using is Mesoanalysis. The Storm Prediction Mesoanalysis site is where you go. Links in the description, also short link right here. And finally, you also have observational data, Ob surface observations. Where do you go for surface obs? I have a site that I have checked for like more than a decade. That link is also right here. And then you have satellite. What do you use for satellite? Well, there are a few very specific recommendations I have for you. First off, you can check out the College of DuPage, uh, which again, these links are popping up below me every time. You also can download Sasquatch. We've done a lot of videos on Sasquatch. Those videos are linked in the description, but also, yeah, right there. So be sure to check out Sasquatch for satellite imagery. You can also get mesoanalysis data on there, which I 
I love. It's amazing. And then radar. Radar. The bet the here are the pro radar apps right here listed. These are the nitty-gritty best and brightest pro radar apps. There's also casual radar apps, which I think are good for most people. And the one I recommend, right there. It's Climb. It provides just about everything. It's not really a radar app, it's a weather app. It goes beyond that and it offers so many cool, useful features. I recommend you check it out. Hey, you're on your way. Remember, weather's for everybody. This video isn't meant to solve everything. It's meant to get you started on your journey. I'm excited to see where you go. Be sure to check out the next video in this series. And also, remember, stay tuned, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. When all was tangled up in blue, what if we...